emulsification is a process that takes place in the small intestine of our body. So in this lecture, we're going to focus on what emulsification is, how it is actually carried out, and what it does. Now, recall that fats are hydrophobic, and that means fats will not dissolve in water. Now, the solution found in the lumen, in the cavity of the small intestine, as well as the solution of the chyme, is mostly water. It consists predominantly of water, and that means the solution is polar, it's hydrophilic. And that's exactly why fats or lipids will not easily mix with the chyme, nor will they easily mix in the solution of the small intestine. And that's exactly why, because the fats and lipids cannot mix with anything else, they will aggregate together to form very large molecules known as fat globules. So if we examine the following section of the small intestine, this is the lumen of the small intestine. These are our villi of the small intestine. The red section is the smooth muscle that contracts and creates the motion of peristalsis. And these individual spherical molecules are the fat globules. So fat globules are basically nothing more than the aggregation of cholesterol, triglycerides, and other lipids that we ingest into our body. Now, these very tiny blue regions, these structures are basically the pancreatic lipase, the proteolytic enzymes that break down our fats, the lipids, into our fatty acids and glycerol. Now, lipase are water-soluble, and that means they cannot actually mix with the fat globules. Now, the problem here is, because of the very large size of the fat globules, our lipase molecules cannot actually access the inside portion of the fat globules because they cannot dissolve into these fat globules. And that means they cannot actually cleave the majority of the ester bonds that basically hold the triglycerides, the lipids, together. In other words, the pancreatic lipase can only cleave the bonds the lipids found on the surface of the fat globules and they have no way of actually getting inside those fat globules. Now, this makes the efficiency and the rate at which lipase, a lipase actually cleaves the bonds very, very low. And what happens is, in order to increase the rate and the efficiency at which our lipase molecules actually break those ester bonds to form fatty acids and glycerol, the liver produces a special type of fluid known as bile. So bile consists of amphipatic molecules such as phospholipids and bile salts, and it also consists of hydrophobic molecules such as cholesterol. Now, amphipatic simply means these molecules do not only have a hydrophobic section, they also have a hydrophilic section. Now, when bile is produced by the liver, it is stored in the gall, it is stored in the gallbladder, and eventually it is released via the common bile duct into the small intestine. Now, once the bile is inside the lumen of the small intestine, it basically mixes very well with the fat globules because it contains hydrophobic molecules, and this is what breaks down the fat globules into smaller molecules we call emulsion droplets. In this process, by which the bile mixes with the fat globules and breaks them down to smaller emulsion droplets, is known as emulsification. Now, emulsification breaks down the fat globules and it greatly increases the area on which the lipase can actually act on. And digestion begins on the surface of these emulsion uh, droplets. So, digestion takes place at these emulsion droplets on the surface of these droplets. And emulsification greatly increases the surface area on which lipase can actually act on. So, this increases the efficiency and the rate at which the lipase molecules can cleave those ester bonds. 
So this is our fat globule. When we mix it with bile, emulsification takes place and we break down the fat globule into these individual molecules we call emulsion droplets. Inside these emulsion droplets, we still have many of these triglycerides molecule that we actually have to break down. But now the surface area greatly increases and these uh, pancreatic lipase molecules can actually attach onto the surface of these emulsion droplets. Now the question is, if our emulsion droplets are hydrophobic and since our pancreatic lipase is hydrophilic, how exactly does the lipase bind onto the surface of our emulsion droplets? Well, basically with the help of a special type of molecule known as colipase. Colipase is amphiphatic. It has a hydrophobic and a hydrophilic region. The hydrophilic region binds onto the lipase while the hydrophobic region binds onto the surface of this emulsion droplets. And as soon as the lipase binds, it begins our digestion, it begins the breakdown of the triglycerides found on the surface into fatty acids and our glycerol. Now, as soon as we break down the emulsion factor or the emulsion droplet into these fatty acids, the fatty acids themselves are hydrophobic, so they cannot exist in the solution of the lumen by themselves. So what happens is the amphiphatic phospholipids and the bile salts that are secreted with the bile basically create a spherical structure around those fatty acids and this structure is known as a myocell. So once again, let's take one of these emulsion droplets as shown. This blue section is the pancreatic lipase. This orange section is the colipase that allows the lipase to bind onto our surface. And over time, this pancreatic lipase breaks down the molecules, our triglycerides, into many fatty acids. Now, if we zoom in on any one of these tiny dots, we basically get the following diagram. So we have a myocell and the membrane of the myocell is formed as a result of the member of the phospholipids that come from the bile. Now the outside portion of the phospholipids is hydrophilic and the inside portion is hydrophobic and enclosed inside the myocell we have the fatty acid that was broken down from our triglycerides found inside the emulsion droplets. Now, what's the big deal with these myocells? Well, myocells are 200 times as small as these emulsion droplets, and that allows these very tiny myocells to actually get very close to our membrane, bind to that membrane of the enterocyte found on our villi, and that allows our fatty acids to get inside our cytoplasm of the cell, and ultimately that cell transports the fatty acid into the lacteal that connects to our lymphatic system. So we see that the process of emulsification takes this very large hydrophobic fat globule and it breaks it down into much smaller emulsion droplets. This increases the surface area on which the pancreatic lipase can actually act on. And so the pancreatic lipase with the help of colipase binds onto the surface of these emulsion droplets. So we see that digestion and breakdown of these lipids and fats actually takes place on the surface of these emulsion droplets and not on the surface of the fat globule. So each one of these emulsion droplets is eventually broken down into our fatty acids. And each one of these fatty acids is surrounded by this membrane that is formed from either bile salts or the bile phospholipids. And these tiny myocells are much smaller than these emulsion droplets and these myocells can easily approach the membrane of the enterocyte. They can bind onto our membrane and that allows our fatty acids to enter the cytoplasm of our enterocyte 
found inside the small intestine. So this is the process by which we actually increase the efficiency and the rate at which the pancreatic lipase can break down the fats and lipids inside our body.